the, the thing is, too, that you're you know, popular and well known, etc., but not rich. No, that's the thing. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, What's the line? If you're so smart, why aren't you rich? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the realization that you know there's somebody out there called Terry Pratchett who's mm -hmm. rapidly getting more money than God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Really. I'm waiting for the day when Terry buys my phone from Bill Gates. That would be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> yes. 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 Because Bill's not making the right computer programs for Terry's machine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it now. Pratchett soft. <laughs> I like Pratchett soft. Practice. Micro practice. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, the moment. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very good. I'm sure he'd make a much better job of it. Well, I suppose the question, if you had a practice intel chip, would then the life, would the the ultimate question uh, of my answer, the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything be big? More than likely. Yes, that, that, that actually makes sense. Instead of a seat prompt, you just get a little bit of this. Definitely. Oh. Ratchet dose. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Monkey dose. Oh. Monkey dose. <laughs> <laughs> he said the M word. Can't say that. You get beat up. Yeah. Well, obviously, you made the practice. You know, you actually made it on the regular basis. Good question. Uh, George McDonald Fraser. Uh, although, I'm, I'm getting off. The Flashman books because they're taking so long to come out. I mean, I, <laughs> I shouldn't say this because my own books are a bit sluggish, but um, no, but uh, Donald Fraser is a lot of fun, but he's increasingly getting involved in uh, footnotes, you know, shades of practice again. But um, I mean, Donald Fraser's writing is such that it, it's all as historically accurate as he can make it, which involves a lot of pouring through old, I mean, old books. Look at the um, the references in the back of, say, Flashman at the Charge, none of the reference verses he refers to are any younger than 1858. Now, not all of us can get at these, but he's spending all this time wading through them and then writing writing a bit of Flashman involved That's in the That's true, he won't stuff. stop. But he, he won't get off. He won't he stop the damn research. This is, this is something which, which, in other circumstances, is referred to around the House of Morley syndrome. Yes. He won't <laughs> stop doing the research and actually write the book. Well, well the research is probably more fun than the writing. Well, it's less that's, work. That's difficult. Yeah, it's, it's less work, and and you know he's he's a living example of the old story about it takes two people to make a masterpiece. One to hold the brush, and the other one to hit them on the head with a hammer when they're done. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know there there are times when I really want to walk into his office and just get the hammer and say that's enough research, Ed. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and tell him oh, get oh, on with well, it. Well, he must be quite an adult. Like, in the doctor's orders, mm. you've got this marvelous thing with McCoy in Switzerland. Yeah. And he's looking out, and he explained all the different mountain ranges and all the time. Isn't it terrible to have to go to the toilet? Yeah. 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 I opened a new tab. Yeah. So yeah. I opened a new tab. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that uh, we were insisting that they actually pay by bankers draft or by real cash money. And the most money I have ever handled in my life was £78,000 in used 25 notes, <laughs> which a um, uh, trucking company brought in. And I was supposed to take that to the bank at noon. I took it to the bank at 3 o'clock because I was counting it again. <laughs> There's something about the fee large. <laughs> now tell me the truth, because I've never asked you this, but it does occur. Did it not occur to you on the way to the bank to take a right turn instead of a left? Just <laughs> take your butt to Alder Grove and leave the country. Did that not occur? It to you? did, it did. <coughs> uh, I mean, you know, it's absolutely untraceable. If someone gave me 78,000 quid, I would, I would be so tempted. I well, I was, I was. The important thing was was that I, I hated the job. Uh, <laughs> I started it in 1980 and I resigned in 1986. And I, like I, said, I started the first week in February in 1980, and by the end of the second week in February, I knew this was a bad idea. <laughs> but um, I, I had um, I had an honours degree in English language and literature, so there wasn't much else up. <laughs> Terrifying. But then you know, I stuck it out for six years, and then I'll be off to America. But definitely, definitely, there was there was the temptation. I was wearing the official going to the bank waistcoat, the one that looks like a banana republic vest with all the pockets. Unfortunately, the pockets are all checked in and checked out by senior officers. But, um, yeah, definitely. I mean, Alder Grove Airport was only 20 minutes away, and I was driving my own car. Yeah, I mean, I would have, I would have been sorely tempted, sorely, but then again, they would have never arrested until they got the no, this is one thing yeah. to bear in mind about the tax men, they never sleep. <laughs> also, I discovered something rather interesting within the first week of working for them. Um, customs and excise don't need a search warrant to enter your premises. They can just come through the door, and also, um, anybody, anyone higher than me, basically, had a thing called uh, an officer's warrant, which meant that you could uh, request assistance from any other public servant including the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the police, the SAS, the Special Branch. Uh, you know, the visions of, um, of my immediate superior, Pat Higgins, standing at some farmer's door with his little black, black briefcase, three tanks, two hurricanes, <laughs> <laughs> and HMS Hermes sitting in the back. <laughs> Signature of the official secret act, not just once but twice. Uh, once when I joined the Air Force, and then once when I joined Customs. And I am fairly sure that they could make a case for me telling stories like this in print as a violation of some clause or other. Well, which then they could put me away. Which bits of it are secret? You don't know. You don't know. They don't tell you. It's, it's a, a secret. secret. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, once you sign it, it's important to you, you die. You know, yeah. they're fucking holding your bones. Oh yeah, and they put it in the mangle. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it still has a certain, you know, Buck Salford, that agent. Da da! Yeah. Yeah. What an image. Yeah, yeah. Where instead of a trench coat and a snap on the floor, you were an angel of Akamak and a cloth cap. Yeah. Yeah. The black is special. Another question, a personal question. Who came up with Ensign Rock? I, I just got tired of no one using horses. It's about time someone did something about this. I mean, here's, here are these perfectly nice people. You know, they're, they're obviously... They the ways through rocks. Yeah, I mean, they're highly intelligent. You know, very nice pan pizzas, yes. And uh, that was what it looked like to me first when I saw them. Um, <coughs> The, the description actually comes from uh, a list of original series episodes that appeared in the fanzine in the sort of mid-70s. And the description of Devil in the Dark was, a mother pan pizza fights to save her baby soccer balls. balls <laughs> 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 from, from bad people. And uh, the, the image of the pan pizza never quite left me. Uh, and uh, so, when I, you know, was just looking around for an alien, it suddenly occurred to me: here's this very intelligent species who, who are nice people. It's only going to be a matter of time.
time before they wind up somewhere in Starfleet. Why not? You know. So that was uh, that was the start of that. That was that was very enjoyable. No, unfortunately, um, orders stand on from higher up that. Um, a humanoid crew, a, a ship with a mainly humanoid crew would be an exclusively humanoid crew because the uh, the ergonomics would have to be rebuilt for anything else, blah, 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 blah. So let's put the water at the back of the bus. There were people in the front office who really did not like any creativity that wasn't theirs. And uh, they're gone now, that's okay, but uh, they, were, they were a pain in the butt. No need to keep harping. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still not. there and he's not. <laughs> Just how much are you restricted to what's similar right? Completely. Very. I mean, anything they don't like in, in your, your book, they can take out. Um, they it's can, actually they can even demand the money back if, if they don't like you know, the way you did it. Yeah. But it's a bit of an education to send off for the, uh, the writing guidelines for yeah. the novels. Because th these, these are available. You, you can write off to um, Pocket Books in New York and ask for the writing guidelines for Star Trek novels. And they'll send them to you, no problem. Um, in fact, I would actually recommend anyone who's interested to do it for the price of um, a stamp and a self addressed envelope. Or a uh, self addressed it wouldn't be. It, it would be a uh, uh, international reply coupon. Yeah. Yeah. But it, uh, to, to read this, it is quite an education because the restrictiveness of the rules when compared to what's actually in print is quite surprising. Um, the, the amounts of juggling that people like Diane and Peter David and uh, Annie Christa was yeah. no one who did, 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 was, you know, did, did sort of an end run. I mean, I, <laughs> I think, uh, so far as I'm concerned, rules of engagement only got into print because um, Certain people in the office who would have interfered with it were actually off on vacation when it arrived. Yeah, it's <laughs> I'm glad to it yeah. the, the thing is, too, I mean, rules of engagement, it's a very military sounding title. And Starfleet is not, and never was, a military organization. <laughs> which makes the USS Enterprise the most heavily armed fishing smack in the <laughs> <laughs> Now, you, you, you learn to wiggle. I mean, right now, I think the guidelines are something like no more books about Vulcan, no more books about Spock, no more books in which the universe is, is ripping apart. Um, I can understand that, you could overdo it. Um, and so you have to sort of feel around for No more books in which the Enterprise is menaced by a strange alien force. Or, yeah, <laughs> yeah. My, favorite, my favorite description. That's great. But um, the difficulty is right now, you know, it was increasingly a problem with Paramount, and now it continues to be a problem with the Viacom as well, is that they are very concerned about the homogeneity of their license. The characters need to stay the same. And, you know, homogenous, as Anna Russell says, as in milk, <laughs> is, is, you know, probably about the level of homogeneity they're looking for. They can't really have characters change. They can't have situations be too much different from other situations. They're in a situation now where what they want is more Star Trek that is sort of plain vanilla Star Trek. Mm -hmm. They don't want sausage flavored Star Trek or hot and spicy, you know, uh, chicken korma Star Trek. They just want plain old Star Trek. They want sausage, and they want it Tuesday. So they won't compare about novels. They won't compare about novels, and, and for those of us who resist that um, and and still try to give them a good story despite not upsetting the people in the licensing office too much, it becomes a, an interesting game. Um, and it, it is yeah. it is rather a game. Uh, which is why the really good Star Trek novels are really, really good. Mm. Because uh, the writers, whoever they may be, have expended an awful lot of imagination and effort on actually coming up with a plot that will entertain them while they're writing it, and yeah. at the same time be accepted by front office. Yeah. Yeah, so I, have to, I have to say, I do have a, Peter David and I have one advantage over almost everyone else who's presently writing Star Trek. It's that we've done a lot of other work for hire. In television, for me, in comics for him. So he's used to, and I'm used to, working inside of the people's licenses. It's a very limited kind of art form, but it has the same attraction that writing sonnets does. I mean, they're a very limited form as well. But you can still do a whole lot with a sonnet if you really spend the time and effort. Yeah, um, yeah, you, you, can, yeah. you, can write, you can write haiku as much as you like, but directly you try writing haiku in the form of a limerick, it's yeah. not haiku anymore. Exactly. So, if, if you're able to work inside tightly prescribed boundaries, as you have to be when writing for television or you know, when licensed for comics or any other kind of licensed property, 
Uh, you learn to do that. You learn to dance inside the lines and stay very carefully inside the lines when you're coloring. Um, we, were, we were all probably a very anal bunch of kindergartners. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Never went outside the lines of the coloring book. And uh, to be able to do it creatively inside the lines is the game. That's what keeps it attractive. Um, the minute I find I can't do that anymore, or I find it just annoys me too much to do it, I'll stop. The funny thing is that uh, I don't think anyone except me uses the term, but Star Trek is a shared world universe. Yeah. Mm. Like uh, the fleet, like Feed World. Yeah. Um, the, 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 ground, the, the groundwork has been established by someone else entirely, and then you come along and you get to, to play in that world. Yeah. Uh, nobody forces No, No one held ever a gun to my head and said, you have to do this. Mm. I just decided I was going to do this and down the torpedoes. And, and, uh, the torpedoes can be quite large and annoying sometimes, but if you, you learn to you know dodge quickly enough, you can you can work with the situation. Um, yeah, also, it, it, it's certainly certainly for me and um, I think Diane as well. Uh, running for Star Trek is in a way a sort of thank you for 27 years of entertainment. I mean that's certainly how it started. Yeah, if, if we can get if we can get to sort of entertain other people, and we've been entertained by other people. Right? It's, well, it's, it's, it's really rather charming, you know, to have Ron Moore grab you by the lapels and say, "I love your books." Mm -hmm. That was that was a bit of a rush. And uh, Ron is now a good a good friend of the household who fed him food very late at night. And, and <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I, I, I made him a rather alarming curry. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, he thought it tasted absolutely wonderful, but wanted to know why we were keeping the toilet roll in the fridge the following morning. <laughs> 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 Expanded on yourself. Now, what about Mr. Roddenberry's invention? <laughs> 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 they were getting very, very creative. We were having to hit people with things a lot. But they were very good. But Ron Ra was very taken with this. The, the fact that uh, you know they're, they're obviously rabid Trek fans, but at the same time they have a, a life outside it. Yeah. And uh, he was getting all of this. But we, we got back very late. Diane went straight to bed, and Ron decided that he was hungry. I mean, his insides were claiming it was somewhere it was around about 7 o'clock in the yeah. morning, mm -hmm. rather than 10 past 1. <laughs> so um, I, I threw him a curry together, and he enjoyed it enormously until the following morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he got up and said, he's very understated, very dry, and he got up and said, I'm not sure I'm well. <laughs> and I said, so, so Ron, who do we ask? <laughs> to, get, to get more details about this, what's the problem? Said, well, that was a real hot curry. I said, ah, yes, it's right. It'll pass. <laughs> yes, that's the trouble. <laughs> that's right, it did, it did pass. We fed, we fed him sour cream. That always helps. Right there. <clears throat> Um, Enough of Mr. Morris in the military press. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I can just imagine what the Kelly is like from a man who likes to use maybe 50, 20 cloves of garlic. Mm. Oh, the garlic. Oh, 40 at least. <laughs> Chicken with 40 cloves of garlic is a delight. <laughs> it's great stuff. It's great stuff. You'll, let's put it this way. Everyone you, you intend to see for the next day has to be at dinner with you. <laughs> <laughs> and it won't, you know... It, 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 it doesn't taint your breath. It does not taint breath. But you will far too take the color. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's, it's the sulfur bonds, as usual. And, and uh, it, it's just extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's yeah. literally 40, 40 plus cloves of garlic poached in chicken stock and then used as a vegetable with roasted chicken. It's really good. It's most people's chance, the first chance actually to taste garlic as a vegetable rather than as something that knocks your... You, 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 take, some, you take some lemons and peel them yeah. carefully and slice them in and throw them into the chicken as well and then you put in your chicken stock and then mm -hmm. random garlic cloves up the chicken spots and then you put the lid on, you put the whole thing into the oven and you go away for That's a different recipe. Is that a different yeah, recipe? Yeah, that's it. Have <laughs> <laughs> you done that? You killed the chicken first. Only if you really ask. <laughs> one of the most important pieces of software in my machine, besides Netscape and besides Word 6, is Menu Master. I've got about, right now, the database has about 3,000 recipes in it. And, uh, 
in Rec Food Recipes News Group. They post mm -hmm. about 100 or 200 every week. Mm -hmm. I at least think I want. <laughs> and I download them, and then once, about once a month, I go through the database and throw out about 500 that I realize I don't need. Uh, but there are a lot of very creative cooks out there. There's one with cold lobster salad with um, jalapeno mayonnaise. Jalapeno <coughs> ginger. Jalapeno ginger mayonnaise. That one. But if you yes, but if you if you sort if you sort through Menu Master using the word garlic, I did this. <laughs> <laughs> the computer the hangs up. No, 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 it just lists 650 recipes <coughs> out of about 3,000. Mm. You go looking for chocolate, it lists another 1,100. <laughs> <laughs> you go looking yeah. for chili. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do chilies, but I had to use a lot. But you should tell them the pork and chili. Yeah, pork and chili and chocolate. Uh, well, uh, for, for those who don't eat pork, use beef or chicken. You just vary the cooking time. Um, you, you make up a sauce of um, chopped onions, chopped garlic, uh, chopped tomatoes, uh, uh, tarragon vinegar, uh, coriander seeds, juniper berries, uh, chilies, and chocolate. You can, you can be really impressive by ostentatiously peeling a bar of Cadbury's Bourneville if you don't have any proper cooking chocolate, yeah. snapping it into eating one half and dropping the other into the pot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody, somebody got there first, but the effect of the chocolate, you can't taste it, but the effect of the chocolate is to grow and season and thicken all in one. Yeah. I like the slogan, but I think it's been used. <laughs> but then what, what you do is you, 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 you run the meat lightly, and then you pour the whole thing into the casserole, you pour the sauce on top, pack it into the oven, and go away for a couple of hours. And then you come back, and you fall upon it. It is... Mm. It's very good. It's very good. We gave the recipe to a local restaurant, and they mm. were they touted it as pork with chilies and chocolate, and they couldn't get anyone to eat it. They then decided to call it Mexican pork, and everyone ate it and said, this is wonderful, wonderful. You just can't tell people over here that there's chocolate in a, a meat dish. Yeah. Well, no. We're, and we're, we're, we're too. Yeah. The, the joy is though, you don't tell them, and they eat it, it's just fine. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, the, 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 the conservative Irish palate. Oh yeah, uh -huh. oh yeah. The conservative Irish palate is conservative only when it's going to be paying for the food under its own pocket. We had a Christmas, well, a sort of uh, inter-Christmas inter New Year party, sort of non-denominational. Non no turkey. There is no turkey no on the menu now. party. No <laughs> pudding. <laughs> and um, uh, I remember making making three different curries, uh, a vegetarian one, uh, a, a meat one, and a chicken one. And I ended up having to have the chicken one described to me, because it went out to be devoured while I was still putting the finishing touches to the beef one. I saw the full pot go out, and I saw the empty pot come back. Pot. And I didn't get any. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. People spent the rest of the evening telling me how good it was. One of our neighbors, you know, spooning lime, lime pickle and chili pickle over this stuff and eating with the tears streaming out of it, but eating. <laughs> oh, tears came down, the food went in. They did not stop. Knife, fork, spoon, and rammer. It was very much like dinner at the Boggies. Yes, it was, it was just terrible. This is another thing. I had to annotate his copy of uh, Board and Rings because he didn't get most of the jokes. Most of the, the brand names are American. He didn't know what they were. Well, the, uh, yeah. the, 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 magic great, sword. the great sword of Krona, Krona, which to me is Marjorie, in it turns out States, to be a razor blade, in the blade. Blade. <laughs> which makes a bit more yeah. sense. And things like you know, nasahist and, and no dose, well, you know that no dose. I know tablet, all about no dose. Uh, two no dose yeah. tablets washed down with a cup of espresso and coffee. I didn't God. sleep for two days. <laughs> 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 He's a puppy, I guess. <laughs> jangle, jangle. You can hear his nerves fire. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're caffeine pills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's good. Where can we get them? <laughs> <laughs> Probably in the States. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're much favored by students. Cramming, people, for example. people cramming, uh, Like me, for instance, who was seen going into his um, honors final for English language of lit with English language lit made simple. <laughs> 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 and only, it was only half a joke. <laughs> I could never get into Jane Austen, so I read, I read the summary. <laughs> 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 but you didn't do that. Yeah. You didn't do that. I had a steamy argument once with the, 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 the English professor at a, a college about um, six chapters of D.H. Ross that I hadn't actually read, but I picked up enough of it from the, from the, yeah. the group discussion, mm. and I got to this hairy argument, and I thought, what are you doing, Cheryl? Yeah. This guy's only got to say, well, where did you read that bit? And you're cooked. That's only his lady chatting, it's obviously in the toilet. Terrible. But your fingers, Charles, are Oh, the chalker. Oh, oh, 
Did you have a book with all the dirty bits of sort of well thumbed? Oh, yes. The Miller's Tale. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. We had to um, in the Nun Priest up so far. Oh, God, yeah, we, I, I did the Nun Priest Tale right for A level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Shakespeare, Shakespearean tutor, was heavily into not just Shakespeare but into all of the Jacobean tragedies. Oh yeah. Main hack, slay oh, and destroy. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah, oh gosh, I mean th try this one for a size. Um the, the well known play Antonio and Melida and its sequel, Antonio's Revenge. <laughs> which tells you what happened to Melida. <laughs> And then Bussy Dongwas and its sequel, The Revenge of Bussy Dongwas. Followed by Bussy Dongwas and the Temple of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> They're great titles. Though. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was it? The, um, what is it? The, the, the Duchess of Malfi. Um, mm -hmm. the, the White Terror, was it? The White Terror. Yeah. Was it the White? Something like that. Oh, something like that, anyway. Um, the Revengers tragedy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, it's all great. It was slash fiction. Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely. Well, no, no, slash fiction is something else. Mm -hmm. That's slasher fiction. Yeah. That's the thing. You uh, could make Coriolanus now and get past the censors. You could you? not, right? You know. Um, <coughs> what about um, by, uh, by kid? Uh, the, the Spanish tragedy, yeah. where um, Geronimo, the hero. Um, loses his girlfriend to the wicked machinations of the Count, and the, the, the Count, in the last act, is caught by Geronimo and his friends, tied to a chair, and then made to kiss the rotting skull of the deceased lady, which Geronimo has already smeared with a contact poison. And as the Count goes into convulsions, the stage directions say, Geronimo cuts him free of the chair and stamps upon him as he does. That. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> they don't write it like that anymore, yeah. you know? Oh, God, yes, I mean, yeah. I, I love yeah. the concept in Coriolanus where a girl gets raped by a group of guys who then put out her eyes, cut off her hands, and cut out her tongue so she can't That's smell. not Coriolanus, that's like Titus Andromeda. Titus Andromeda. Yes, yeah, a gangbang and a mutilation yeah. followed by cannibalism. Yeah, and then the father kills the girl because she brought shame on the family. Yeah. 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 Cutting her hands off so that she can't write their names. Yeah. Are these, are these Values everyone's got. Oh, yes! I can't remember. 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 I can but a lot of what they drank wasn't small beer. And um, the, the book refers to the fact that not only was it an armed society, and consequently a moderately polite society, <laughs> but it was also a very noisy society because everyone was sloshed by a butt as well. <laughs> Uh, I would say how, how, true, how true or not that is in, in historical context, I don't know, but it actually explains a lot of the behaviour of characters in Shakespeare's and his contemporary plays. Yeah. 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 Well, they're not, they're not completely yeah. blitz, but certainly yeah. they're yeah. a bit more aggressive. Yeah, we've got video one. Oh, right, yes. That great tub of soap. That butt of sack. Yeah, there's a book now available, yes. uh, Shakespearean Insults. Oh, I, I put it on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's someone got a web page. Shakespearean Insults. You go in each time you enter. Uh, I just remember the author of the biography, yeah. Anthony Burgess. Ah. Uh, if, if the thing is available anywhere, it's grab it. It's great. Yeah. Did I show you the other one? The, uh, the surrealist compliment generator. <laughs> no, sorry. Is this anything like the futurist cookbook? Uh, I'm afraid it is. It, it's a strange way. No, you, you, you go into the, the web page and it produces a compliment, which nonetheless... You know, it which is a good start. Yeah. Yeah, yes, but it, it says something like, your head is like a tub of eels. <laughs> <laughs> But there was a recipe for a dish called the bombing of Barcelona, <laughs> <laughs> which was to be eaten by the light of blue candles. By blue, blue light, yeah. Otherwise, apparently, it would be 
you lost something. <laughs> 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 what was it? Um, it, it was a pasta dish. It was a pasta dish, apparently, yes. Um, but, but, but it had to be eaten by, not blue, blue candles, excuse me, by blue light. Yeah. They were really strange. They had more time than this. <laughs> the really big school of art. Very peculiar. Horses. Um, <laughs> it was, it was a short <laughs> <horse. laughs> Sorry. But it was, it was a very peculiar cookbook. And it, I think it's still in print. I think it's still in print. It says, I want it. I want it. Yeah. Next question. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hello. 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 Uh, oh, you could have a John Smith. You could have a point. Oh, John Smith today. Okay. Point of victory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's un until until after lunch. And don't forget the penguin and the trapdoor. <laughs> no, <laughs> different brand. Two, two, <laughs> two weasels and a jar of marmalade. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And make sure the weasels are well greased. <laughs> That's the <laughs> <a> recipe. <laughs> <laughs> For disaster. Just catch your mouth. Next question. You think Peter said earlier he hasn't got a. He hasn't had a birthday present yet. That's true. <laughs> He's creating a weapon quite nicely there. <laughs> well, I see well, that. They, yes, they, they do an AK-47, which I rather fancy. The problem is, well, first of all, we're flying home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it's 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 always look at You might be able to pick up a few uh, trades. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think the thing to do is, is when we drive back next, and we have a group full of you know, used books from Hale and Y, we can stash them too. <laughs> <laughs> And then when they stop us at the board, we'll explain that we are book runners. <laughs> <laughs> Won't we do? Yes, we <laughs> Next question. Can we mail it to you in pieces? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, only comes oh. to, it only comes in to sell any pieces. Please do. <laughs> and that looks a little bit suspicious. <laughs> 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 they really are a little bit sensitive about it. So you can't really find that in your room. You couldn't paint no. it once, say it's a cake icing set. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <a> <laughs> <good idea. laughs> I think your mother would not be convinced. <laughs> she, she would look at me sidelong. She would. The way she does. She'd hit you on one she would, side. She would use irony. <laughs> <laughs> she would be sarcastic. <laughs> You use a fireplace poker. <laughs> 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 Next question. Um, you, you use the 17th century. Mm -hmm. Yes. You've used old Russia. Mm -hmm. You've used history quite to quite an extent. Yeah. Your latest mm -hmm. book is going to be old fantasy. Yeah, but it, it after various rewrites of the plot. And yeah, the but uh, yeah, but, but the <laughs> the one that I'm working on at the minute is based around uh, version 8.1 of, yeah. of the outline. But it's uh, it's set in a fantasy equivalent of Norman France. So there we go, history again. Yeah. The title, uh, the Clog and Hoof, comes from the the suntan you get when you're wearing Norman armor. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing satanic. Nothing satanic about, Nothing satanic about no. it at all, but. Um, it's if you see someone wearing this particular suntan in cities with a broken nose, you know this is, this is one of the dead giveaways of nasal <laughs> 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 yeah. Then then you know that you are in serious trouble because this this guy is a trained killer. Don't vex him, or he will vex you. Mm. Well, yeah, I think the word is ventilate. <laughs> <laughs> ventilate for a parade. Yeah. Annoy. See, the, the problem is, is we're both, you know dreadfully lazy thoughts in part. And we see no particular reason why we should invent what already exists. Mm. Um, it just find the serial number off and paint it. If there's perfectly color. good history out there that we can repaint, you know, and, and rebadge. Which has kept a couple of shop for so many years. Oh, yeah. Sure. And there's tons of history that no one knows anything about. Um, you know, it, it, it's intensely exploitable. Um, you know, if he's actually you know, going to use his little characters and, and the blood books, that's one thing. But also, you can you can lift entire eras and and just you know retool them a bit, and people will never suspect. Mm -hmm. Most because most people in, <coughs> in both here and in the states are dreadfully undereducated in terms of history. They were. Poor
forced to to you know digest and then disgorge so many names and dates that they came with a total loathing of the subject. So if you present them to something that's something entertaining and fun, they go, oh wow, fiction. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 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 so, somewhere, somewhere another uh, period I'm rather interested in is uh, the Byzantine Empire. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that that's been used by him. It may be. Thank you, Mary. Oh, it's oh, oh, yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. period, everyone knows what it was. Turtle Dove. Harry Turtle Dove. Harry Turtle Dove has it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. right. okay. But it won't be the same process yeah. in my mind as it is the process for his. I should think not. <laughs> yeah. Probably be more currently. Well, yeah. I mean, history through his, his brain, it's like pushing something through a sieve. It comes out all curly. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be, be recognizable. Or no. not as such. Yeah. I mean, there's the Native American stuff. Yeah. No. Uh, you could write um, a, a historical or a fantasy set in genuine pre Columbian North America. Or you could take that particular tribal culture and shift it somewhere else and to claim it was completely original and all made up by you. Yeah. And if you do it properly, yeah, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, sources will occasionally betray themselves and all you can do is sort of smile cheesily and say, oh well. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, I, I must have picked it up in past. Yeah. Nothing, nothing yeah. is totally original. Yeah. 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 My first four, uh, the Warsaw series, were uh, well, essentially European samurai. Yeah. The, uh, the armor looked vaguely similar. Um, a lot of the customs were the same with the, the uh, suicide approach you know, to, to preserve your honor and that sort of thing. But then uh, as it went on, it got it got more devious. It became sort of Nazi German. It became Imperial Roman. It became the, it's not just the stage that the, there are so many influences in those four books that I couldn't begin to say which was the primary one. And uh, they, they've become sort of, uh, I suppose it has become an original, my own world. Yeah. Because I, I, I can now fit others. Well, I've been doing this. The um, the Clan Wars books are set in that world, but 500 years previously. And I'm now no longer looking at uh, reference books, non-fiction reference books. I'm looking at my own stuff mm. because I've sort of established the the future history. Mm. And now what I'm doing is nipping in and putting in the groundwork. And uh, you know, things like um, in the early books. Uh, the Albans had a, a history of sort of you know, 2,000 years of noble and honorable culture. <laughs> and what I've done in the Clan Wars books is establish that they've got only 500 years of very dubious history of culture, <laughs> and they've made up the rest to make them look important. <laughs> 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 Which yes. is a very human thing too, yeah. especially when you consider that uh, they, they started out like as a bunch of mercenaries who were given notice to quit. So they nipped over, uh, took up their next contract. On the, no, this is actually a historical pinch from what happened in Ireland uh, when Strongbow was invited over. Um, he was invited over to help uh, uh, Dermot of Leinster against um, Colm of Connacht or something like that, on the grounds that the Norman knights of the period were better equipped than the Irish warriors of the period. The trouble was, after they'd come over and done what they had been invited to do, they were better armed than anyone who could throw them out in here. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So I, I used that idea, yeah. and it worked. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it, it, it's make us leave. Yeah, really. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of very accessible stuff that that just no one knows about. And when I was working on the Swiss books, I, I did a lot of straightforward theft from Swiss mythology. People say, "What Swiss mythology?" <laughs> Yeah, they just don't know. Um, oh yeah, they, they, some, there yeah. are some amazing monsters in Swiss. Oh Swiss yeah, yeah. They, uh, the, 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 the touch, the touch. It's great. It, it's it's a uh, um, haunted cow belly. It's a haunted cow belly. With eyes. <laughs> it's great. Only in Switzerland. Everybody else, everybody, every country demonizes its domestic animals. So that in in England you have giant black dogs and black cats and things like that. In Switzerland they have black demon cows. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And the Watachi is real wonderful. It's a cow that's been skinned. So there's nothing inside really, except it sort of glows in the dark and it rolls downhill at you, speaking in tongues. And now if I saw that, I'd leave the county immediately. <laughs> now there's two kinds. There's the Watachi, the regular Watachi, the garden variety of no. Batash. And there's the Batash Kun Ez, the one with eyes, which has eyes all over the cowhide. So this thing comes rolling down looking at you, 
in all directions and speaking in tongues and saying rootsy probably because everything's rootsy. <laughs> 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 and you leave. You leave. It, it's, its purpose in life seems to be to scare lonely travelers into falling off the sides of the mountain. Which is very easy in Switzerland. <laughs> now, and you tell someone about this and they go, what? <laughs> you know, and here's the, they, there are these great Swiss monsters um, that no one's ever heard of. There is a, a work there called the Reiter Romanisch Crestomathi, which is 13 volumes of Romansh language, folk tales, um, myths, legends, going back um, in, in the oral tradition to the middle of the last century, but reaching much further back than that to the, like the 11, 1200s. But even the title of the yeah. book yeah. itself sounds like it belongs yeah. on the same yeah. shelf as the Necronomicon. Really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> the the, the yeah. was actually the original language. It was, it's, it's the one earliest the old, one, yeah. the earliest yeah, one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of the, um, it's a the, 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 the Latin, of the Latinized Latin Latin. German of the period. It uh, spoken, spoken yeah. by, um, well, we Hel Hel Helvetians who served in the Roman army. Yeah, they, they came back when they uh, took they, they, they spoke their, they spoke their own language when they joined up, but they had, when, by the time they left, it was like French Foreign Legion. Yeah. They, they spoke what passed for army Latin. Yeah. And they brought that home. The typical thing, the, the usual routine. Here we go, another hobby horse. Mm -hmm. The usual routine when you left the Roman army was that you were given grants of land and citizenship if you were not already a citizen. And since you know, Legion was, what, four and a half thousand, five thousand men strong, and you'd have a draft coming in at any given time, those who weren't killed would all be leaving the army at the same time. It's quite likely that they would be given you know, a sizable slab of land broken up into their land grants. So you would have a little sort of Veterans Village yeah. setting up. You see the guys elbowing each other in the bar, you know, two or three months before discharge, saying, "Look, look, let's just go back. You know, you remember that little valley that you liked? You know, why don't you settle there? We'll settle the next one over, and we can be neighbors." And someone else says, "Yeah, yeah, and me, and me," and then you wind up with you know a hundred or two hundred families populating a number of isolated valleys, all speaking the same you know sort of bastard Latin, which then. Because they're so isolated, this language is never contaminated by the Burgundians when they move in, or by, by the, the French. And uh, the language remains now pretty much as it was spoken in the 1100s and earlier, as far as we know. Now there are five different dialects of it, presently duking it out for, uh, for you know which one is going to be the, the important one. I think Sir Sylvan is, is winning. Um, but here's this language, which is, the, of, besides Romanian, is the only direct descendant of Latin still being spoken on the, on the planet. And because these people were so isolated, their mythology remained isolated with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there's a, a very specific... Let nobody tell you that fantasy is not educational. <laughs> I mean, th this is the problem. I mean, people say to me, you know, when I tell them I'm a fantasy writer, that sometimes you can almost hear them saying, but, you know, what's your, what, what important work do you do? <laughs> You know, what's, what's your real job? And one of the things I want to do... I'm a big man for the Women's Institute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I want to do is, is leave at least one work of serious scholarship behind me. And, and the thing that there isn't right now, which I can, I'm can i in the process of producing slowly as I do this research, is the first English Romance Dictionary. Because there isn't any. All there are are Romance German Dictionaries. Um, so I'm having to learn German so that I can <laughs> read. <laughs> 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 but this is the thing. I'm having to translate my my Romance material out of German half halfway. Also, I'm translating Romance language cookbook at the same time, which is which is. <laughs> well, that's food again. Oh, <laughs> these people do they know how to eat? Mm. It's a very interesting cuisine. A lot of pork, a lot of chilies. They like their spicy food down there. You wouldn't think so. A lot of potatoes, too. A lot of potatoes. Anywhere anywhere that the, the soil is poor, potatoes do brilliantly. And in Switzerland, they thrive. And there are more potato dishes up there. But strangely, you're also in a, a cross-cultural area. They're, one, they're big starch is potatoes, but also they're big starch is polenta. Because it, it harks back to the Roman end of things. Corn. Yeah, and there, there is a small corner of the Grabland where you'll find that the sort of number three starch is uh, kasha, or buckwheat groats, uh, uh, polenta negra, as they call it, black polenta. Um, it's, it's a very interesting area. It's, it's a culinary crossroads. It, it's the sort of cuisine yeah. that suggests that when you eat it, you won't be blown away. No, no. Whatever you will, that, that's not one. I mean, one favorite dish of theirs, which, which when we go down to Coeur, I always wind up eating. I don't blow away either. It's a thing called maluns. 
And Malunz is, it, it, it's not clearly translatable, like the closest you can call it is potato crumbs. <laughs> so what you do is you, you take potatoes you boiled a couple days ago and put out to, to cool. You'll often see them put up on the top of little ski chalets in, in some of the resorts. They, they've made them ahead of time for Rushdie. And to cool them faster, they put them on the roof. And so you're, 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 going, you're going past in the train and you mm -hmm. see you know, these, these little collections well, of lumps in, in melt, in melt, or sitting in a, a pool of melted snow. Yeah. And my first thought was, God, these horses can climb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you got your boiled potatoes from sort of the day before, two days before. You grate those, you skin them and grate them, and then you, you peel and grate some fresh potato. You mix this all together with some flour and some salt. Then you melt the lard. <laughs> lard is, is the local fat, and you, you dump They're the happy food. because they, they eat lard. lard. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, this message brought to you by the Lard Advisory Committee. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And then you, you, you have a big iron, cast iron frying pan, and you dump this business into it. You just start stirring. You then stir for three quarters of an hour. And what you have left when, when the business finishes is little potato, sort of little round crumbs that are crunchy on the outside, but tender and beautiful on the inside. You serve these out with a sharp apple sauce and the local red or white wine, which are all very good. And then you eat some more. <laughs> and then you sort of roll yourself out the door. It's definitely a peasant cuisine. They are big on smoked meats. Um, in small doses. It's, it's more vegetarian cuisine because no one could afford meat on a regular basis. Um, but it's, it's very substantial and filling and yummy, yummy stuff. But again, here's all this great stuff that no one knows about. You know? No one ever makes it down into that part of the country. Um, I remember the, the, our, two of our friends who used to run Shell Swiss, uh, Swiss restaurant in New York. Uh, used to, I heard one of them on the phone one day talking to somebody else about Switzerland when he, when he mentioned Core, the city that I was just discussing. I heard him say, Core? Core? There's nothing in Core. <laughs> you know. And it's at the same time, a very beautiful wall, medieval city with some brilliant, brilliant food. Uh, when I was researching these novels, I went down there and you know, I told them I was you know, working on a book and they said, about what? I said, about here. And they'd say, about here, there's nothing here. <laughs> yeah, common mis misconception about Switzerland as well. They're cheese, chocolate, and cuckoo clocks. Uh, 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 cheese, yes. Chocolate, yes. Cuckoo clocks, no. They import the cuckoo clocks from the Black Forest. The Swiss make Rolexes. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> which one do they? You know, um, it, it's quite fascinating. Um, expensive timepiece yeah. <laughs> ever since. Yeah. But studying the country in depth can give you all kinds of wild ideas for, for other, you know, universes. You can retool material. Yeah, it's like I said earlier, you, yeah. can, you can either use uh, a little known culture yeah. straight, or you can take it and, uh, like I said, file the serial number off and paint it a different way. <coughs> yeah. um, Robert Heinlein used that phrase, actually. He used to say, um, File the serial number off, paint it a different color, but send it out better than you find it. Yeah. And, and that's okay. I'm trying to do that. That's okay. It's not so much theft as, as um, borrowing. Uh, borrowing. borrowing. Well, Enhancement. I was going to say, taking off one is plagiarism, taking off money is research. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you do, you yeah, do and, and uh, now that I've got all of Terry Pratchett yeah. books, I can just search them from my own comedy pants to know. But you do have a responsibility to, to leave it better than you found it, really, or at least leave it different. Add something that wasn't there before. If you're going to be a magpie, you have to leave something else bright <laughs> in exchange for sparklies. Sparklies. <laughs> Girls love sparklies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Next question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah.
Polychrome, hotel. Polychrome was the first time it was actually suggested, and the hotel went a little bit crazy. Apparently, the uh, hygiene laws or something are um, writers have not hygiene. Writers, writers are not clean. <laughs> 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 yeah, we might have to be handy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dettol or something. Dettol and chips. Yeah. Yeah. Can you make it for no lunch? Oh uh, sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not difficult. I mean, I've I've got five or six cookbooks from them, that area alone. I mean, this is the joy of, of all the things we have in the house. We've got more cookbooks than anything else. Four hundred and seventy-six. Four hundred and seventy-six. Uh, no, you bought two. You no, bought no, I bought eight. Yeah. Yesterday. <laughs> 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 you see, this is how it happens. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's really weird. Earlier on this yeah. week, um, we we were. we're We've just finished moving houses, you probably know. Uh, we, we've been going through the books, and uh, you know, keep, keep, and uh, keep it put in the attic. Have you read this in the past three years? No, nope, Log it. So we, yeah. we took 70 pounds worth, at least that's what they paid us, we took 70 yeah. quid's worth of books to the second-hand bookshop, and came back sort of rubbing our hands thinking, gosh, this space. What do we do when we get to Plymouth? Five books. Well, you read and before you know where you are, you're right back. <laughs> yeah, really. So there's, there's now, so we're now 480 on. Something like that. Yeah. Of, of all kinds, uh, from the very basic to... Uh, How to boil a potato. Yeah, <laughs> to, to very specific. However, <laughs> we don't have any of Delia. No, no Delia Smith. I've got, I've got all so the Curry Club books, though. Yeah. They're great fun. Yeah. Um, I'm laughing at everybody. I mean, we've, only been, we've only been trying to tell you about cranberries for 200 years. She just copped on, just now. Yeah. <laughs> now, Pat Chapman, the, um, the owner, proprietor, manager, mm. boss of the Curry Club, is, he's a great writer because he's yeah. one of these people whose enthusiasm comes right off the page like a perfume, yeah. Yeah. or indeed like the smell of fried onions. Garlic. Thank <laughs> um, you. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of these writers. Terry's another one. The, the, his enthusiasm for the writing wafts off. Um, what I said earlier about uh, you know you have to enjoy what you're doing, otherwise it shows. Um, it's one of the reasons why I haven't tried writing a, a Starfleet novel in what, almost eight years. Yeah, no, no, because yeah. I haven't had a, a good idea that'll fit in the Starfleet universe. I mean, I wonder what the guidelines. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's that too. Um, Perhaps you could do a Star Trek cookbook. I don't think anybody's done that. There are actually yeah. there, um, there are a couple in the states at the moment. Um, they're they're, they're a bit simple-minded, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> Chekhov's Borscht. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, something else. Uh, we we, 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 we are here for that. Uh, yeah. that Russian yeah. dessert I was talking about yesterday. Yeah. The Shmetani. Oh yeah. Give him that. Yeah. That would give him something to scream about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. 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 We're playing with the idea, I, I've been tiddling with the, the idea of doing an expatriates cookbook for a while for, for Americans who are sort of marooned on the side of water and trying to... And can't get to the 7-Eleven without an expensive place for Christmas yeah. present. And then it flipped around and then it became... Uh, I, I, I just looked at it sideways and said, wait a minute, I'm coming at this wrong. What I want to be doing is a UK and Irish cookbook for Americans. So what we're going to do is a series of cookbooks called Cook It Yourself in fill in blank. Cook It Yourself in English. Cook It Yourself in Ireland. Cook It Yourself in Switzerland. Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what it's going to be, it's going to be a combination book about how to arrange your own self-catering holiday. Because what you want to do is go to interesting places and eat their food. Yeah. But you don't want to do it all in restaurants. You want to cook some. So it's going to be about how to go to a given place Get yourself a, a, a self-catering flat, and then where to go to buy the best food, and what to do with it when you've got it. You know, so we'll do it. You know, one for each country. We're going to do Ireland first, and we're going to do the video, and we're going to see if we can get Sky, or you know, one of the, the local the learning channel or something like that. channel or something like that to to air this. Um, yeah, short <laughs> slur. <laughs> what are do? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah. there's a program on the wedding channel at the minute. Um, the two guys with the two's, camera. Two's Country or two's something. Country, yeah. that. Um, yeah. And it's a very off the wall camera stuff. It's a guy and his camera. Who you know? And, and the cameraman has got a mind of his own, too. You know, yeah. And if he doesn't want to climb up to the top of the castle tower, he will. The camera will say, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so, yeah, you, will, you will see. Um, you wanted to say Bill Grundy, and that's not right. No. But you'll, you'll see the, the, the chat and say, well, oh, all right, please yourself, then. And then there'll be a sort of 
fade to black, open up again, and then the, ca the, uh, <laughs> the camera will zoom in <laughs> on him way up there, <laughs> and uh, make sure you don't want to come up. <laughs> what are you going to do? Camera will then pan to the nearest pub. <laughs> oh, this is the point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, they could, if they could do that, we can do that. Um, you know, we can find, you know, the, the apartment, get it, you know, get moved in, get set, then then you move to going shopping. Here's a really great food store. This is a really nice chain of gourmet shops. Here's a great cheese place over here, or a wonderful butcher. Go and get what you need, and then you go home and cook it. Oh, these sash I know. Yes, I know. Oh. 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 Meet me with me. Make me go to Paris. <laughs> Stockholm. <laughs> <laughs> to Frankfurt. Yeah. Yes. There's yes. another another one which I'm, I'm seriously like to do well. And there are a couple of books, uh, non-fiction stuff. <laughs> I would like to try. Um, one is sort of, um, weapons made simple for writers. There's a message there somewhere. No, it's, it's not meant as a joke, it's serious. Because I picked up a book in Los Angeles when we were last there on the uh, Armed and Dangerous, it's called. A writer's guide to, have to guns. And it, you know, it's meant to help people who write thrillers, detective stories, and so on. So I found three mistakes in the first chapter. <laughs> yeah. Listen, you found mistakes in Frederick Forsyth, dear. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> the boy is a bit of a copy editor. Just a wee, just yes. a wee Well, tab. Freddie Forsyth, who prides himself on getting everything right. The guy who wears a hat. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> A book called, uh, well, what was it, uh, The Deceiver. The Deceiver. It's, a, it's, a, it's a collection of short stories. One of the stories, uh, it's a murder mystery, and the MacGuffin is that uh, the, the, the murder victim has been shot by this particular weapon, and it's an oddity. It turns out to be a pre-World War I Webley revolver. And he refers to it as a Webley 4.55. Yeah, hang on. This is a, a, a pistol you can wear as a hat. <laughs> It's a point four five five. And, uh, okay, right. It's acceptable in the uh, the, the first print run that I've got. It's bloody careless for when the thing is reset and they don't pick up on the mistake. He describes a claymore mine as a flat disc which leaps in the air and sprays ball bearings all over the place. The, uh, the claymore is actually a curved disc. Yeah. Because if you get in the way of it, it, it's basically it's anything it's you have It's a remote shotgun, Yes. It's a remote It has a wonderful big, legend on the front towards <laughs> enemy. <laughs> <laughs> there was an HMB plot to get into the factory and reverse the mold. <laughs> <laughs> this is because the claymore was being sold to the Americans and they yeah. didn't want them to hit them. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's right. That's right. And there's, there's another book. I don't believe at this point. You want too much of this shit. No, it's true. There's I think all they need that. It's true. <laughs> there, there's another book which I'd like to write um, on, on, on the um, the use of chilies in the kitchen. Yeah. I like, I like hot food. Yeah, he's carrying yes, this. Right. Yeah, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is the is. official U.S. Army issue belt holster for Tabasco sauce. Mm -hmm. It is designed to <laughs> fit on the M1 wet pistol belt. There's one uh, in Desert Storm Camel too. Yeah, <laughs> in, uh, in the American um, Concord. The MRE. The MRE. Yeah. The meals ready to eat. Which every every one. single one has a little Tabasco mm -hmm. bottle. Yeah. Just to make the food edible. Well, yeah, don't <laughs> you know, you know, you know the other translation of the acronym is may regurgitate everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But, um, so far as our kitchen is concerned, um, but, well, our room is a nuclear power, I don't know if you know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, courtesy of our kitchen. We've got a <laughs> two kilo bag of habaneros tucked in the dark cupboard underneath. No. Has anyone heard of the Scoville scale? Right, okay. It's a means of working out how hot chilies are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scoville scale, uh, yeah, the Scoville scale. Well, on the Scoville scale, um, a salt and pepper is 0 to 10. Tabasco sauce is 20,000. Habaneros are 280,000 and climbing. <laughs> and climbing. <laughs> the new ones, the Savinas, the red Savinas are apparently even even hotter. It's, it's a, a mutant hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Ninja climbs down your throat and shakes your epiglottis back. <laughs> yeah, Diane very generously brought me back a bottle of pickled habaneros from a trip to London. Oh, it was great. Uh, I was curious. I mean, the, the ones we've got are dry. 
So you know, they, they have to be reconstituted and so forth. But uh, these were pickled in uh, wine vinegar. It's so, California. So I, I thought to myself, oh, I'll tell these, really. <laughs> <laughs> and got myself a, a, a kitchen knife, cut off. You know, you know the sort of thumbnail pairing you get when you chew? Like, it was no bigger than that. And I went, munch, 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 sweet, 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 sweet. <laughs> <laughs> For ten minutes, I couldn't speak. He was incapacitated. He was foaming at the mouth. This is a bit gross. But of course it is. For ten minutes, I was. No, I tried. I tried all the cures. I tried milk. I tried cream. No, I tried good. yogurt. No. I tried a shot of whatever spirit I could get. We had rum. Usually helps. So not as a good one. Uh, no effect. Spent okay. the ten minutes until the burn died down. Just standing like over the sink, dribbling. I was. You know the effect you get when you rub your eyes and you get the sparks. I was getting that. I was getting a hissing in my ear. Diane, of course, was leaning over beside me saying, you know what's happened, of course? It's neural overload it's with the cranial nerves. <laughs> the cranial nerves were going, hello, sorry. <laughs> you can't cope. You know, it was very impressive. <laughs> very impressive, yeah, exactly. Impressive is a good word. Agony is another good word. Well, it got better. Oh, it got much better. <laughs> Two weeks after that, our friends Bill and Jody sent me a bottle of sauce from his face. Oh, the insanity. The insanity oh, sauce, yeah, it's called. Cool. Um, they had they wrapped it in a plastic bag because these things will leak in aircraft yeah. uh, as the pressure drops. So, um, being an oily sauce, it could also be good. And an oily bottle in a tile floor kitchen is a recipe for disaster. So I washed it. But five minutes later, I found myself sort of a wiggle wiggle with the rings. Then they actually started to hurt. When I pulled my rings off, the skin underneath had blistered, or the oil had got underneath. I then read the side of the bottle. <laughs> extract, refined extract of habanero chilies, mm -hmm. onions, and vegetable oil. Yeah, Scoville scale, 400,000. <laughs> yeah, it's very violent stuff. A, a lot of the people who discuss that there's a... a you, you rub it on the cylinders yeah. of your engine if it won't yeah, start. Right. There is, there's a mailing list on the internet for, for people who like hot chili heads. called Chili Heads List. It's very delightful. And most of the people who talk about Dave's Insanity Sauce mostly say that it is it tastes terrible. And the only thing it's good for is adding, heat. is adding heat to a dish that you want to be hotter. So you'll take It'll like that a right? drop is enough for an entire pot of chili to raise it appreciably in, in the heat level. And that's the only thing it's good for. Most of them say it, it smells like, it tastes like, like dirt cat fur. Um, <laughs> and so I have to yeah, I mean, I <laughs> And the company makes other sauces which are apparently tastier and less ferocious, but that one is strictly a heat additive. That's the only thing that's used for in the house is, is if something well, we've, just we've got, quite uh, fun we've got some like 48 yeah. bottles of various hot sauces. Yeah, mm -hmm. and what? Well, what? Well, I to that. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. We take one more question? Yeah, take one more question. Okay. I came late to the town. Why didn't you have to go? <laughs> 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 I certainly 
No, I do. Mm -hmm. I like to put my friends in my books. I don't bother with people I don't like. They're not worth the time. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's more insulting to be more. That's the thing. I but, mean, uh, the, the thing truth is, if you don't write what you like, it will show. Yeah, a thing that we have started to do, uh, or Dan Moore and myself, yeah. um, is put up uh, characters mm -hmm. for auction uh, conventions. Yeah. Um, yeah, male character, female character, villain, hero, whatever. Uh, there are a couple of characters in uh, Dark Mirror who are there on the strength of having bought their way in at uh, a Star Trek convention. Yeah. Reasonable. It enough. was good for the charity. Good, for, good for the charity yeah. auction, and it's uh, it gives them a certain amount of satisfaction. You know, they, they they still look like sad bastards, but at least the charity. <laughs> 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 I, didn't say, I didn't say that. They did not. No, I did. <laughs> Give a man a gun and he'll say anything. It takes God, some Give a man a woman and she'll say it's funny. Behind every great writer. Behind every great writer is someone else with a stick. Yes. It's <laughs> true. It's true. But the, um, the, the lady that uh, became both the, one of the heroes and, and became sideways a villainess because her, her mirror her turned, mirror turned, out, was in it too, yeah. turned out that completely accidentally, I hooked the character mostly up with Jordy, I've entered an engineering person. It turns out she had seriously the hots for Jordy. I have no <laughs> idea. I have no Pure idea. Serendipity. There, there are moments when the angel of happy coincidences comes down and sits on your shoulder and says, do it this way. <laughs> and you don't know what you've done until later when you find out the person is swooning because you, you put her in what appears to be a, a slightly romantic situation with him. And it's the least you can do. It's <laughs> the least you can do. It makes, it makes people happy with the help. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Okay. No skill on my nose. Yeah. Oh. One time. Uh, I was going to say, uh, do you have to be ejected or can we run this just up to the top of the hour? Well, well I've also been around another video today, so and we'd like to get things set up. Right, okay. And you're going to be needed at one point. Oh, what are you doing? Turkey readings? Oh, oh really? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Ah. In fact, I've got a book for the Turkey readings. I've got it with me. Oh. It's called oh. The Ashes oh. of Eden oh. by William Shatner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to watch. <laughs> you don't know about this book? Oh, God. Not yet. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Why are we trying to get some of these toys? Well, I don't know. I'm going to get some of these toys.